and welcome to yet another edition of CMTV News. We are broadcasting live from our studios at Maligo Street in Boya. For our major story, Christians in Cameroon join their counterparts in the world to commemorate the Ascension Day, the day they believe Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. We visited some churches in Boya and shall be bringing to you this and more in this edition of our newscast. Good evening once more to you televiewers of the Chilean media television. The presiding magistrate at the Yaoundé Military Tribunal has rejected an outright bail for Anglophone leaders, uh, Baristan Kongo Abobala and Dr. Fontem Niba, but has however proposed a judicial supervision which will limit the Anglophone leaders' movements with restrictions on who they meet or call, and they have to provide shorties authorized by the judge. The case has, however, been adjourned to June 7, 2017, when the court would decide on whether to grant Barista Agbobala and Fontem Neba judicial supervision on grounds that they are honorable men with known professions. Worthy of note is that this judicial supervision only concerns two and not all of the Anglophones involved in the case. To our major story now, Christians in Cameroon have joined the, their counterparts in the world over to commemorate the Ascension Day, the day they believe Jesus Christ went into heaven, body and soul. This day is usually commemorated 40 days after the resurrection of uh, the Christ at the Presbyterian Church uh, in Moriko, Boya. It was the message of hope that characterized the pastor's sermon as he called on all Christians to be steadfast for Jesus Christ is interceding for them. The pastor is speaking to Pride Achidi and Bernard Yariyogo. Christ, who was resurrected from the dead on the Easter Sunday, appeared in the disciples. I was with them as well to be resurrected from the dead on the Easter Sunday, and Jesus that we appeared in the disciples. I was with them for 40 days. And on this day, in the year, Jesus that we That was the Ascension Day celebration at the PC Moliko here in uh, Boya. We switch over now uh, to uh, Cameroon company that has launched the automatic toll gate system in Boya. It was in a press conference uh, in uh, Boya. A system known as the automatic toll gate system has been presented to pressmen in Boya by the premium enterprises of software configuration of manual systems that is PEFSCOM. The system, according to its developer, will help fight against heavy revenue leakage in the road transport sector in Cameroon. Details in the following report. At a time when Cameroon is trying to increase its steps in order to catch up with fast-growing nations like Gabon in terms of the toll gate setup, this system, purely Cameroonian, seems to be the missing ingredient as far as revenue collection and accountability in our road transport sector is concerned. The automatic toll gate system, according to its developer, the PEFSCOM, will not only reduce amateurism on our roads by restricting drivers without valid driver's licenses from going past the toll gate, but will go as far as tracking down stolen vehicles even without the GPS system. The advantage of the system, first, it gives security to the car owners. You're able to locate your car wherever you go to. You don't need the internet. It's a local map within the country. Second thing, the, the government is able to actually know which road is mostly being ploughed in the country. And third, they are going to keep the resources, the finance, because the government invests a lot to create roads within the, the country. They'll be able to manage the accounts and see that how the money is coming in. And the fourth part of it is that unwanted access or users of the road will not be able to access the road because they will need to access the system with a valid license number. The fourth part, you use fraud. Fraud documents and documents which do not exist in the nation will actually not be into use because the system will not recognize them. The PEFSCOM already has a system currently being tested by the Elections Cameroon and they are planning a meeting with the Minister of Transport for the validation of the automatic toll gate system. 
The system means that road users will no longer pay toll gate fees at the toll gates, but will pay before they get there through their accounts accessed through smartphones. You must first of all have a smartphone. And you buy either a scratch card, like we used to use for MTN and Orange in the past, where you go and buy a prepaid card, and that you, you recharge your phone with, or you go buy uh, mobile money, where the network will be running the account for you. And each time you have it, and you approach the toll gates, with all the components put into the system, you are... Uh, your car registration number, that's the categories number as it is there, your car plate number, your driver's license number, and the camera map put into the system. Once you are approaching the toll gates, the account is uh, discounted by the amount that will enable you to cross the toll gates. The automatic toll gate system comes at a time when it has been revealed that Cameroon is losing more than 420 billion francs annually due to illicit financial flows and it is therefore a welcome initiative as far as transparency in revenue collections in the country is concerned. They are basically fighting technology with health, where I have received free consultation from military health personnel from the Ministry of Defense in charge of ex-servicemen and war victims. The ex-servicemen and their families were screened for high blood pressure, diabetes, HIV, and other old age-related diseases recently at the regional delegation of ex-service for men and war victims. The screening was done by Colonel Dr. Afana Jampol, technical advisor at the Ministry of Defense in charge of ex-servicemen and war victims. Details in the following report. In fact, the Board of Retirement, the Majesties are still there. Many are the ex-service men who came to benefit from the government's largesse as the fight to stay healthy after serving the nation with honor and fidelity and now facing the problem of getting another job in order to keep themselves busy. The ex-servicemen, very appreciative of the government's efforts in lending them a hand, even after their retirement, were screened for free on all age related illnesses like high blood pressure, diabetes, and even HIV and AIDS by health personnel from Yaounde under the supervision of Dr. Colonel Afana Jampol, technical advisor at the Ministry of Defense in charge of ex-servicemen and war victims. Well, this event is very important to us because this is the very first time they are doing this type of exercise because ever since we went on retirement, we have never seen such a thing again before. So this time that uh, they have really, the, 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 the ex-servicemen, they have taught, our, the, the, they have seen about, our, uh, about us, so that is why we are happy that uh, this exercise about the about they came to see about our health is good. The ex-servicemen have been called upon to refrain from stressful activities and avoid getting stressed as it will only make them develop a very complicated health conditions. They have also been called upon to visit the military health centers of the southwest region on a regular basis in order to make sure they are always in good shape. We had uh, a free screening uh, medical checkup for ex servicemen and war victims who are resident here in uh, FAF Division. The importance of this uh, activity is to make the ex servicemen and war victims to be aware of their HIV uh, status. Equally, uh, we were about to make them know whether they are diabetic or not. You know, when you are diabetic, there are a lot of things that you have to avoid. When you have high blood pressure, there are a lot of things that you have to avoid in order to stay healthy. So when they finish with the screening, they meet the doctor, he counsels them and uh, tell them how to live well if you are uh, 
status is either positive or negative. Now, the, the assistance we give them is that, not really in medication, but when they consult in our health units, they pay just for 50% of what uh, they are expected to pay. If you go to the military hospital and you, are, you carry out some uh, tests or exams, and it is supposed to cost about 10,000 francs, a reduction of 50% is made to all ex-servicemen who go to the military health institution. Servicemen are those men who have worked for the nation with honor and fidelity. During the, the period they were working, most of them gave a lot to the nation. And they did not got, they get the opportunity even to take care of themselves. Many of them have certain diseases and we have to take care of these diseases. Many of them have problems of reinsertion and problem of reconversion. Because when they go on retirement, they will not stay like that. They have to do reconversion to other work, working, uh, working activities, which are not military activities. We must help them to do that reconversion. You know, when a teacher goes on retirement, he can continue to teach in private. When a doctor goes or a nurse goes on retirement, he continues to work in a private hospital. But when a, a military or gendarme goes on to retirement, it is difficult because it, there is not another army or another gendarmerie. So he has to reconvert himself to work in another area. And we must help them to easy their reconversion and their reinsertion in the society. Because they were army men, now they are civilians and we have to all, also we have to assist them and amongst the assistance that we give them, we have health assistance. That's why we, uh, what we came to do here, to assist them in the health area. And we take care of their activities, the, the diseases of the third age. According to what we can find, we look for high blood pressure, we look for diabetes, we look for HIV and other things related to them or to their families, their wives and their children. It is worth noting these are the people who have defended the nation with all their might, putting their lives on the line and all they deserve is for all to make their new lives away from the military as peaceful as possible. <laughs> In fact, the call of retirement, the majesties are still there. From Boya, we move over to Chico, where the Chico Council has held its first ordinary session for the year 2017. The session that was held to examine the last year's administrative and stores management accounts was presided at by the Senior Divisional Officer for FACO, Zhang Trua. Ta Javis has the details of that session in the following report. From December 2016, the Tico Municipal Council has experienced a decrease in revenue of 86,597,941 francs, representing a decrease in percentage of 9.1% and a decrease in expenditure of 49,319,163 francs, representing a percentage of 5.5%. 9% as compared to 2015. These were the remarks of the Lord Mayor of Tiko Municipality, Chief Mokondo Danya, during the occasion of the first ordinary session of 2017 of the Tiko Municipal Council to examine the administrative management and store management account for the year 2016. The event that brought together councillors and stakeholders around the Tiko Municipality was manned by the Senior Divisional Officer Sang Tua representative who appreciated the effort of the council in carrying out developmental project. Mr. Mayor, I am indeed grateful for the warm reception deserved for me and my delegation. May I equally recognize the tenor of councillors and other distinguished guests in their various ranks to this session. It is a true demonstration of your high sense of patriotism, maturity, and respect 
for Republican institutions and constituted authority. Dear counselors, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the administrative management account and stock management session is prescribed by law to a forum where the mayor, the municipal treasurer, and the storekeeper to render an account of the management of cultural resources, the implementation of development programs and projects as inscribed in the investment plan adopted during the previous year. During the deliberation, a lot of things were raised and a lot of problems were tabled to the government as to inadequate facilities put in place by the government in order to carry out some of the projects that the Tickle Council have marked for the year. Some of the major projects realized by the Tickle Municipal Council for the year 2016 are... We worked on the social, economic and road infrastructure. Uh, the social domain, we, we, we built uh, classrooms, uh, uh, gave assistance to some hospitals, gave assistance to the needy, we bought the wheelchairs for the needy, uh, for road infrastructures, we uh, developed so many roads, built so many uh, corvettes, we bought it from, uh, when I was reading my address, we bought so many of them, we built so many classrooms for the social part of it, Budeka, Bisselene, Mutengene, gave benches, uh, uh, teachers table and uh, chair, most of the schools in, uh, in the municipality. As the 2018 municipal and legislative election approaches, what holds the fate of some of its projects as the mayor job will be on the line? No, you see, my role uh, from the beginning till now has not changed. You see, I came here to give the municipality um, a first lift with my team, and I think um, our electorates up to now uh, have never doubted us. Huh? I think the confidence is growing every day, and um, we are looking forward to the next year for the upcoming elections, which we know you had it yourself. As you commenting our efforts here in Tiko municipality, it means he himself as a authority has seen that a lot has actually changed. Huh? I think both inwardly, that's inside the house and outside of the house. Still in the session, the project of water crisis in the Mutengene neighborhood was brought to the limelight as many of the councillors highlighted the aspect at which the council is going to do in order to ensure that the municipality provide good drinking water and accessible water to those of the Mutengene community. Cognizance of the fact that boreholes are already been docked around the Tiko municipality. The next project is Mutengene. The Lord Mayor of Tiko, Mukondo Daniel, highlighted that... <laughs> That um, when we came in, we put, up, we, put, we put up the project ourselves in um, in my office. My office was uh, transformed into a uh, uh, project proposal uh, office because um, I just graduated from the Pan African Institute to do as um, uh, when, I, when, I, when I did project man management, everything fresh in me. I built up a project team and we put up that project and um, we won the project for 786 million from KFW to put on the water project in Mutengen. The pre feasibility studies have been done, the feasibility studies have been done. Now we are going now to uh, the next stage to select uh, the, the, the firm that will execute uh, the project. I think before the end of the year, we will start the execution phase. At the end of the council session, it was realized that a lot of achievements have been recorded by the Tiko Municipal Council and much is still expected from the Mayor, Mokondo Daniel. We now take on this news brief which says that the head of state his excellency paul bia has been left fuming with anger since the release of findings related to the ezeka train accident after close to eight months of wait, the philemon young led commission has made public its findings on the causes of the train derailment on may 23rd 2017. the Cameroon railway corporation camera is solely to be blamed for the accident as revealed by the findings According to the findings, the train was in excess speed, more than double the required speed. Wagons were not in good shape with failing brake systems. Train was overloaded and the railway company failed to listen to the driver's complaints about the train's uh, condition. President Paul Bia has asked that the findings be given to the judiciary while also ordering the review of the concession signed between the state and Camry in 1999. The head of state has also ordered that indemnities be paid to the victims and their families by Camry with immediate effect. 
and also that a monument in honor of the victims be erected at Ezeka. The head of state has also disbursed the sum of 1 billion seven francs to help take care of victims and their families. Meanwhile, a consortium of lawyers defending the victims have vowed to go to any length in order to give justice to the victims and their families. It is worth noting that the train accident occurred on Friday, October 21, 2016, leaving more than 50 dead and hundreds of others wounded. We take on this brief break and when we come back we talk sports on CMTV News. We now talk sports. A presidential decree of May 24, 2017 has appointed Issa Ayatuan Enongachu as board chair and general manager of the National Football Academy, respectively. The appointment comes months after Issa Hayatu was ousted from the helm of the African Football Confederation CAF after 29 years as president. Enongachu, on his part, doubles as the head coach of the female national team, the Indomitable Lionesses, and of first division team, Colum of the Jar and Lobo. Both men are expected to fish out and train young footballing talents for our different national team categories while training trainers and coaches, granting them professional assistance. They are also expected to do research and document them in a bid to foster the growth of the King Sports in Cameroon. The National Football Academy was created by presidential decree on September 25, 2015. Well, televiewers of the Chilean media television, it is here we draw the curtains on this edition of CMTV News. Catch the rendezvous again for same time on Monday uh, when we shall be bringing to you a fresher package of uh, the news. But until then, stay glued to interesting programs on CMTV. Remain blessed.